Hey everyone, happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Mai Tais at Sunset. I'm Tai. I'm Mai. I set the intention that we are going to have a fantastic uh, Mai Tais at Sunset podcast. Hope you enjoy listening to us, sending out a lot of positivity. <laughs> I want to re-emphasize, please subscribe to us because we are trying to get bigger and reach more audiences around the globe. Um, mm-hmm. I started a whole new ad campaign inside a virtual world and I plan to extend that uh, further as I found my PS4 and I have an Xbox <laughs> One. And so I'm going to be putting that in my profile and I hope you guys tune in and subscribe because we're going to try to get bigger and better and mm-hmm. hopefully have more things to share, maybe some more special guests on the show. Speaking of expanding, we have a new country, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, that is just like that is completely the reaches somewhere of the planet. else. It's so exciting. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, actually. Did we ever yeah. get India on the map? We did, did have ever? India. We have India. That's that's uh, my friend Jackie. Uh, she okay. actually lives in India. She's been teaching yoga, and uh, she teaches online uh, English to uh, kids in China from mm-hmm. India. So very cool. She used to live on a tiger sanctuary, like, uh, well, live on a, yeah, like a land for a tiger sanctuary mm-hmm. with waterfalls and such. She said she would go walking, but sometimes there would be tigers out. Wow. I was like, did you run? Like, did you run away? She's still alive. She is still alive. She's still alive and kicking. So There are some sad commercials playing for tiger rescue things on on the TV. It keeps running. These tiger commercials. And um, yeah, they're always, they've been endangered as long as I have been alive. So I'm just hoping that. You know, in my lifetime, it still hasn't been able to, you know, get the population up. Yeah, I think the whole Tiger King, Carol Baskin sort of kind of messed up the whole tiger outlook for some people because they (laughs) felt like, okay, this is supposed to be like rescuing tigers, but then it actually made them into like more of like profiteering, like off of them. And Well, I don't think that's the right way to be taking care of tigers they need to no we you need to protect their habitat so like your friend was doing in india on a a designated amount of acreage where it was a preserve for them to naturally live in their habitat that's the way you do it not make it a tourist attraction yeah we were driving through the country today and you know i saw a wildlife exotic ranch Mm. in the middle of nowhere on our way to sheridan texas and i was like what is this? And my mom, my mom and I looked in the lake and there were all kind of different deers and there was a zebra. And I was like, we're in the middle of Texas and nowhere. And there's a bunch of animals that I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> Chilling. Yeah. It's absolutely strange to see um, exotic animals out of the element. Like I remember driving down the one and you pass the Hearst Castle, the state, and then you see yeah. zebras all over. <laughs> and you're just driving down the highway and there's zebras. I actually don't think peacocks are native to Hawaii, but there's a ton of them at Waimea. There are peacocks Falls. because they were given as a gift to um, one of our to some of our Hawaiian royal families. But they're not native. They are right? not native. We also have wallabies, and I don't ever recall that being a gift. But they're <laughs> they're there in the wild. You can find them if you hike up in there. And right wallabies now, wallabies are a, cute though. We're having a big problem with um, invasive deer. Uh, really? on Maui and um, and we're having major drought on the big island. There are all these storms bringing a lot of wind. There's two fires yeah. um, on the big island on one on each side and like right now I know that tourists are being told to evacuate in some areas. You know, it's wow. really sad. You come, you come to your vacation but you know, it's just like everywhere else we have you know, lack of rain, drought conditions, and fire is potential hazard. That's crazy. I mean, I think I looked at your weather the other day, and I texted you, and I was like, hey, is it mm-hmm. smoky there? Yeah. Um, I know that the Pacific Northwest has quite a bit of smoke, Northern California, mm-hmm. and Colorado still has fires. Like, I looked at the wildfire map, and I was like, there are a lot of wildfires uh, west of the Mississippi, so... Quite a few. I mean, a lot of people are experiencing drought, and I don't really know anything about that because we got way too much rain here, and it's going to rain all next week. Speaking of um, 
continued drought conditions. I know that I've been seeing stories on the Big Island with these big ranches uh, that they're selling their cattle and livestock to places like Texas. I was thinking about that today. I was like, I saw a news story and they Mm -hmm. were saying a bunch of people are giving up their pets and livestock and animals like the turn in rate is up like 33 percent to 300 percent. I don't remember. It was some. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty big number. I think it was 33 percent over the week, but 300 percent in one day because people are going back to work and they're giving up their pets from the pandemic. Yeah. That's and I so think sad. that's really sad because my mom and I were watching kind of the, the news together when I was visiting the other day. And she she was like, I know this. I know what you're going to do. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she goes. I know as soon as you get out on that land and you're established and everything, you're going to get a bunch of animals. And I was like, you darn right I am. I'm now you go just in there sent me a picture of this cute little beagle. And I'm wondering yeah. if that's somebody who just left their their beautiful little dog in your neighborhood. Well, I have a story about that. Apparently, there's quite a few wild dogs that are just roaming around the land. And today, coming out of the land... There was a mommy that just had babies Uh standing in front of the gate to my brother's place. I tried to offer her water Uh and she wouldn't take it. And so I actually had a little cooler with some snacks and water and everything in it because we were going Uh to go pick up um, an office trailer and it was quite a ways away. And I opened up a snack pack. It had like salami, cheese and almonds in it. Mm-hmm. And I gave that to her. She looked so skinny. My, She was so skinny and so sad. She was yeah. so sweet to me. And I was like, come here, babe. And so she came over and I gave her her little snack tray. And mm-hmm. hopefully that sustains her for like at least a day or two. Because it was quite a lot of food in there. Um, yeah. And I told my mom when I got back in the car, I was like, she needs it more than me. Mm-hmm. You know, I just love mm-hmm. animals so much. And I... I kind of have this little baby regret that I wish I had grown up in a rural sort of area so I could have just grown up with animals around me because I am very happy with animals. Well, it's not They're too late. So it's not too late. Oh, no, it's not too late. That I think that's my destiny is to take care of animals and treat them well because other people have not treated them well. I'm always kind to animals. Food, water, snacks. I'll give them my snacks. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I was like, this is why I work, because to feed little sad stray animals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to SPCA and I'll probably video it, but I'm probably going to adopt at least two two more dogs and a couple cats. A bunny, maybe a guinea pig, maybe a chinchilla. We'll see. We'll see what's out there (laughs) on that day. So... Now you said you had adventures. What were, what are your other adventures you said you had? Well, speaking of dogs... Mm -hmm. Sky has been coming out to the land quite a bit with us and I just let her go and she runs around. She jumps in the pond. She gets all dirty and everything. But the key is, I think this is the funniest thing. Whenever I start walking to the car to open up the back and I'm like, come on, Sky, let's go. She's always peering out to make sure (laughs) that I don't don't leave her there. (laughs) <laughs> because I don't live there permanently yet. And so every time I walk to my car to get like something out of it, she, mm-hmm. I see her little like head peek out. <laughs> Just making sure. Don't leave me. Don't leave me, mommy. <laughs> so today I'm helping my brother. We actually drove quite far to get this office trailer we're going to use and hook up to electricity. Mm-hmm. It looks like a tiny home. It has okay. a glass door. It's very modern looking on the outside. It has, you know, like a dark roof with a gray siding and white, like, uh, trim. Mm-hmm. It has a glass door. It looks so modern on the inside. It has LED lighting, whatever. And I almost... So the first thing that happened was we had to pump up the tires. My brother's tire pump mm-hmm. failed. Oh, it overheated no. and, like, burned out. So he's driving it with these, like low tires yeah he forgot to kind of lock it in so the trailer almost tilted and flipped into a pond on the way out because we have another piece of land yeah and so i'm on the walkie-talkie we have walkie-talkies and i'm screaming at him oh my god it's gonna tip it was so scary my like you've seen tractor trailers you've seen people hauling things like rvs and such Mm -hmm. when it's too windy they just like flip and then the whole truck will flip with it because yeah. you know it's so much weight well luckily we made it 
we had to fill up everything. And so I'm helping my brother park it in yeah. between two trees. Everything's going well. And then I see, hear this like loud rustling of the bushes. See, this is a good chance for a sound effect, like a loud rustling. And you think <laughs> it's a big wild animal. And I kind of like turn, getting ready to like run or defend myself. I see my niece uh-huh. fall <laughs> flat on her face. Like it was like, like that. Oh, just, no. just, just face plant. <laughs> and my dog, Sky, uh-huh. runs over her body. <laughs> oh, no. I just trampled I just, her. And I just, all I could do was laugh because I didn't want her to cry, you know, because yeah. she got up and she had scraped her hand. But I was like, dude, you just got ran over by the white lightning. Like it was just <laughs> boom. I just saw her fall. It just was so, it's Poor so thing. sad. And the one thing I said to her is like, thank God you're low to the ground. Yeah. Because <laughs> she just face planted. Like, you know how you see like somebody's just, you know, they fall and they like time to yes, kind of roll yes. or they try All to I catch hear, themselves. All I can hear is you explaining dad jokes. Like this is the things that dads say when your child falls is they quickly try to make you laugh. Yeah. And they say things like, did you hurt the floor? You know, <laughs> just, no, so you, I just, it snaps you out of like the, I was you're going like, to start crying. Good and, thing you're, I was like, good thing you're short right now, dude. That would have <laughs> hurt, but it was funny it was just funny to watch it because i thought it was a wild animal <laughs> it was her just face planting on the ground i'm like oh no and then my dog trampling her into the ground more oh uh, gosh okay sorry i don't know if people out there have seen people face plant but it's funny when kids do it and then the dogs end up like just pummeling them because they don't even know better you know poor thing all right i'm done i'm done making fun of my niece I have some more stories, but I will stop taking up the airtime. <laughs> I went out and had an adventure too. Um, okay, what did I do? Um, we talked. How can about... you say you go go out and have an adventure, and then you're like, "What did I do?" Well, because I had like several, and I'm trying to figure out which one I'm gonna try to remember. So the one that we talked about. Okay, so the last time we recorded, we recorded a few days ago, and I said, "I'm not sure that we have anything." in this recording to be an actual podcast bullshit we did (laughs) it was really just me talking about my shopping haul (laughs) of goodies that i got at modica people want to know what hawaiians eat what do they Uh, snack on why why are hawaiian snacks so special well uh, well they weren't really hawaiian snacks that day they were all imports from japan so it was just fun things what imports from japan do hawaiians eat yeah so that'll be in That'll have already aired, supposedly, if it works out. If not, it'll be a a, a very long (laughs) pre-show. Oh, no. Special for Patreon. We'll see what happens. Um, But then I did go um, to Costco. You know how I said a few weeks ago how I wanted to redo my upstairs and I wanted to buy a rug, (laughs) a big carpet, just a good-sized area rug, so I can make it like my my new um hula dance area so i can go practice hula again um and just so happens i was out shopping at costco <laughs> a nerd. and it was on sale it was like it was like 40 dollars off and i was like oh my god it's like it was meant to be and so then the challenge of getting a rug that and it's like uh it's like eight. It's almost eight by ten. It's not that big, but it's big when you have a tiny car. <laughs> so <laughs> the adventure to try and shove that into no. our car. What did that look like? Did you take a picture? Do, do you have something to share? <laughs> no, I actually chickened out, and I didn't. I didn't get it with my tiny car. I went back, but the night before, we were measuring cars, like my family cars, and we're like, okay, this one it'll uh-huh. fit, and it it went from the trunk of this we have a ford something i don't know what it is sedan but it's a four-door anyway so it it went from the back of the trunk and it came right through over the um the armrest of the front seats and so wow (laughs) driving home with the this one rug i do have uh we have a pickup truck um my dad has one Mm -hmm. 
and it's sh- uh, short bed. It's only six feet. So we were concerned because it was going to stick out so much farther. But I thought it would have been really? okay. I think I think it would have been fine. How yeah. big? How long was it again? The rug? It was eight feet. It wrapped up. Because when I brought oh, it, it home, I stood it up on its top end, and I have eight foot ceilings, so it like just barely. Oh, it touched it. Yeah, yeah. You should have. Um, yeah, you could have put it in the truck in the bed, and then just bungee corded it down. Yeah. Next time you have bungee cords, I know you have bungee cords. Actually, bungee cords are all dead. They're all dead. They all, you know, How can they all in be this dead? heat and humidity, they only last for a few years. And then the elastic just, I don't know, it disintegrates. That's so sad, Mike. That's so sad. I was going to say something else that was icky about Hawaii. The other day, the other night, and I haven't seen this in a while, but <laughs> I swear I might cut this out. This is going to be really terrible. So, um... My daughter took a shower and she took a shower late at night and Mm -hmm. I got up a couple hours later to go to the bathroom and I turned on the light and in my shower, there were like a dozen little tiny cockroaches. Why? Crawling all over the bottom of the shower because she forgot to put the cover. I have like a rubber sealer cover that goes over the drain. So you have to cover the drain on your showers because things crawl up from there. So it took me. Maybe you should pour some poison down there. Have you ever used home defense before? The spray? Well, I don't like to put poisons because it goes out to the ocean. You know it's going to get out to the ocean. Yeah, but but I'm telling you. No, well, this stuff actually, it once it dries, it doesn't go away for a year. So it's hmm. not going to wash away. But it's just a little bug spray that I've used, and it's pet safe and everything after okay. it dries. I'll look for it. So I'll it, look for it. It actually keeps the bugs away. So I, around my, my home, there's a, there were a bunch of fire ants. Mm-hmm. And so I sprayed the perimeters. I sprayed the doorways. Actually, when I lived in your house, I used it. And the bottom. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do remember. I do remember. Yeah. And you were like, oh, this stuff is pet safe after it dries and stuff. And it kept the bugs out. So you That's might right. want to get some I had, of that. I had ants that were attacking they were right. so smart that they were crawling up the beams to the second floor. And I did put yep. that and then the ant stopped. Yeah, so that was a good if one. It's, it creates a perimeter. You can get it at Lowe's and I think at Home Depot, probably Hardware Hawaii. Not really sure. But I think you should get that and just spray mm-hmm. it down your drains just one time. Let it dry. Mm-hmm. And then you. it's not, it's not going to be that bad, even if it a little bit ran off because it'll be so diluted by the time yeah. you don't have to spray a lot but just like okay. make a perimeter around your doors and stuff and especially in your air conditioning vents so what i would do is just take a paper towel put a little yeah. bit on it and just wipe the things with it because once it dries again it's not going to be bad for you you know yeah so, so it makes a barrier but do they die yeah they die they actually die okay okay had a lot of roaches not come in. I've seen, when I went back to the land today, there were a lot of dead spiders around the perimeter of my home. Big ones, okay. too. Yeah. So, I feel like maybe you should try it. Yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go look for that. Um, because okay. as it's, it's getting hotter and the weather's been weird, um, I... I know things are going to start coming out. That's usually when you have ants. It's usually around the summertime. They yep. kind of like have their own place during the winter months, I guess, because there's enough rain. But when it's dry. Maybe they're like deep, deep in the ground. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Although it's been really right. weird weather lately, so I don't know. It's been weird weather everywhere. Um, Did you know, know that there was the snow in like Brazil? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Brazil. <laughs> it's not supposed to snow there, just like it's not supposed to snow like that in Houston. Yeah, it's crazy. The weather's changing, but it's so weird from year to year, right? Mm-hmm. Like last year we didn't have this, and then all of a sudden this year with like COVID and everything. Hey, by the way, I did read that Hawaii is up quite a bit as one of the leading states for COVID now. Yeah, 485 cases were reported yesterday, new cases. That's a lot. 
We had um, estimates were like, oh gosh, I want to say it was like almost 800,000 people that showed up in June, visitors. And um, they did, there was some write-up that the tourism authority is going to start limiting tourists to Hawaii. They're going to create a whole plan over the next three years. They're probably going to eliminate a lot of bed and breakfast, Airbnb, those kinds of things. Yeah. And they're going to talk with like the airlines and they're going to come up with a plan to limit um, tourism. That's crazy. I've never even heard of like Hawaii trying to limit how many people would come to the islands, but I mean, they need to do it. I, I know right now there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's mixed emotions and mixed feelings about everything, but I did talk to my mom and I said, you know, I think we're going to have to start carrying our vaccination cards around. Um, I think so. To do certain things. Yeah. For instance, you know, if we go to Disney, it might just be people who only have a vaccine right now because Florida, like I said in the last recording, they're up quite a bit. They're leading. They're the state that's leading it. But I was really worried about Hawaii because, I mean, you guys don't have a lot of people and you're in a small space. Yeah, we're in but a small having space. having that many new The cases land is, is limited. Pretty alarming. Yeah. And it's mostly yeah. people who... Um, didn't get the vaccine because there's a lot of areas oh, okay. of the island where they can't they're unable to get transportation to the vaccine facilities so I they're see. they're actually trying to do an outreach program and small clinics and mobile vaccinations to these harder hit areas that can't get to the main places you know like to go all the way to Honolulu is kind of a big deal if you don't have a car and you're you know your unlimited funds, Almost. especially a lot of older, older people. Yeah, I would, I would think so. I mean, they should have done that a long time ago. They have enough military on the island, you would think. Yeah, to go in and <laughs> do would, it. Yeah, you think they would. Speaking of um, weekend adventures and the, I guess the limiting of tourists to Hawaii. So if you're unable to come in the future or like right now while it's so packed um i thought i could share a recipe for uh spam musubi no we did that one last podcast (laughs) oh i want to share a recipe for squid luau and i learned so much about making squid luau and i even cut some of my own taro leaves that were growing but i had to actually buy a supplemental um wow bunch of taro leaves and I bought a five pound bag, which is a lot. Of Why did you buy a five pound bag? Because oh they gosh. had they had five pound and then they had like fifty pound, and so five was the smaller size. <laughs> but that's um, quite a bit. Yeah. So taro leaves have some. Um, they have these little crystals. Okay. That will cut up your hands. They will cut up your throat. There's all kinds of crazy stuff with taro leaves. So you have to. So there's like a whole process. Like wear gloves, first of all, when handling them. Um, Because I didn't. And I had done this before and I never had a problem. But this time I did. And by the time I had cut through like four pounds of it, my hands were so cut up. That with these little teeny tiny crystal structures that um, I actually had to stop and I had to ask my son to finish chopping it. But you have, yeah, you need gloves. Um, And then (laughs) you have to boil it for like two hours and it has to be like almost a high boil. It takes 45 minutes for it to, there's like a poisonous part of it that will like kill the poison. And then I go a little bit extra just for, you know, hour and a half to two hours, high boil. What you really want it to do is you want it to break down to a mush, to a green mush. This all sounds really dangerous. (laughs) It's just boiling it in water. Yeah. So what happened was um, I was following a recipe from YouTube, from uh, someone that I really like. And right. uh, it was the same one that I followed last time, but this time I I must have missed something or my leaves were a lot hardier than what she had and what I had before. 
So uh-huh. I needed to cook it longer. So I actually ate it and I, I fed it to my whole family. Everybody said it was fine, but I had like that scratchy throat. And actually it's just kind of the same thing with eggplant. If you don't cook it mm-hmm. long enough, right, you'll have that. It has those same crystals in it, these little tiny crystals. They're the same kind of crystals that form in your body when you have kidney stones. That sounds terrible. Wow, I never knew that about tarot. Yeah, so, so I, didn't I guess know... I'm just gonna have to appreciate my tarot dishes a lot more when, when somebody else makes it. The tarot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why <laughs> yeah. you always like make people handle uh, dangerous things like uh, I don't know sushi. First thing that comes to mind is puffer fish. Like, let the experts handle that crap and just enjoy the the fruits of their labor. Yeah, but you still have to. It's still a risk. Oh yeah, it's always a risk. But you know what? There. There is no reward without risk. So mm. good job. And I'm so glad that you learned to <laughs> handle tarot safely after four pounds of chopping. Yeah, five pounds, actually. It was technically, well, I only did four. The other, my son had to do the other last pound of it. But I made so much that I actually put it away in Ziploc. So it's in the freezer. So when I want to make squid luau in the future, it won't be as hard. It's literally, and I didn't, and I was shopping and I, it's what I had picked up first when I, instead of buying taro leaves, like fresh leaves, I uh-huh. bought, I picked up the pre-packaged boiled down one already. And my son's like, no, that's not authentic. You have to get the leaves. So that's not me, authentic. Get out of here. Put it, he made me put it back. And so it was like, but it's so much more work. And he's like, No. So I actually recorded it and it will be the one and only time that I will ever, no, no, it won't be because I'm growing tarot, <laughs> but I was going to say, it'll be the last time I do this. No, <laughs> but I love, I love well, you'll Hawaiian wear gloves food. Next time. Yeah, I'll wear gloves and be smart about it. I know I miss it. Hawaiian food. They have Hawaiian like food restaurants here, but it's mostly like Hawaiian barbecue and it's not the same. Like well, a lot of flavors that are associated with Hawaii is definitely, you know, everything teriyaki, barbecue flavor. We call teriyaki yep. barbecue. So it's kind of interchangeable for us. I remember that and I was like, no. It's not it's like terrible. barbecue sauce barbecue. It's right. <laughs> it's teriyaki it's, it's flavor. Different. Yeah. And yep. Korean barbecue is different from Japanese. And uh, I don't know who else does barbecue famously. Who? No, besides the Japanese and Koreans. Korean, Texans. Yeah, but that's different. I'm trying to think <laughs> the Asian flavors. Yeah. Tasu, though. Charsu, Tasu, whatever. That's Chinese, though. That's, that's not really barbecue. barbecue. That's roasted, isn't it? I don't know. It's delicious. It is delicious. And it is also. Um, it's not that hard to make if you have a if you buy the packet. <laughs> you can actually just really? buy the the mix packet turns your whole pork uh pink and everything and you just oh, bake I've it i've never done that yeah never never done that yeah don't think i will don't want to ruin it don't want to <laughs> ruin it okay so what we what have we talked about we talked about the land a little bit we talked about my knees falling on her face we talked about skyfall you, we talked you had something about... so funny and then i you were telling gonna tell me yesterday and i said no wait save it <laughs> crap i don't even remember see this is a problem i always have like really great things and then i forget well let's talk about okay so what did you do today is sunday what'd you do on saturday worked okay what'd you do on friday work oh yeah you went to work every day dude yeah. i have to work every day next week too i don't know i mean this was just supposed to supplement but i'm trying to think of something else I had the strangest dream last night to this morning. Mm-hmm. I can dream like in sections. So if I wake up because the dream is weird and then I like go back to sleep, I, I can go, I can dream, continue to dream. Mm-hmm. So I think I've been watching like way too many TV shows, like post-apocalyptic dystopias, whatever. So I had this dream <laughs> um, today and I, I woke up. And then I went back to sleep and I was continuing to dream. And it was really weird. It was like a mix of dystopian with sci-fi. And it started with the world had been taken over by a certain extremist religious group. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the purge, right? Okay. And then 
a lot of people were being attacked. And for some reason, I was standing on top of this really tall building, and all I could see were these, like, yachts. So, like, in Miami and in Tampa, they all have these, like, beautiful racing yachts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And speedboats. And all I could see were those. And it was just, like, all these extremists were on these boats. And so we're running. We're hiding. Mm -hmm. Me and this group. And there were a few of my friends in it. And for some reason, like, I got tasked out to do some secret infiltration going undercover. And I was like, I... Mm -hmm. I will go along with it. And I got stuck in a minivan with this family. And the son was just like out of control. But he was sitting in the middle between me and my friend. And he was just so weird. Anyway, so we start to, they said, okay, get ready because we're going to jump in in five seconds. And I was like, jump where? Like, what the heck is going on? So the countdown began. And at first I didn't, nothing happened. They were like, oh, hold on. Here it comes. I see this translucent, transparent, whatever, Nautilus. Have you seen yeah. one of those? Yeah. They're like weird squid things with this yeah. beautiful shell. It appears and its tentacles like go through the car uh-huh. and grab me and everybody else in there. And at, at first I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm dreaming. Mm. Right? Like you could tell yourself you're dreaming. So you're yeah. like, whatever. Then I start to feel something pull me. Yeah. Yeah like physically pull and I woke up yeah I was like what the hell is happening (laughs) so I'm my alarm didn't go off nothing so I went back to sleep and I'm being pulled again Uh and I'm like holy shit where am I going and so it's very blue and this this nautilus is like wiggling yeah I'm doing all the movements wiggling (laughs) and and I get pulled in and I the van just like plops right in front of this church uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my God, where are we? So I get out and apparently I'm just so nice. So I start carrying in these objects that they had put in their van from this other dimension. And it was like stupid shit. It was like, I think uh, one of it was like a PS4. No, it was a Nintendo Switch. Uh-huh. And there was like food, random food, like a uh, funnel cake and like weird stuff. And I was just taking it out of the car. And I was like, what the hell? Would somebody get this stuff? Like, out of everything you can grab from the dimension we were in. Mm -hmm. You got, like, funnel cake, Nintendo Switch, like, random Gatorade. It was weird. Okay, so I'm carrying this shit in. And I walk in, and the whole lobby is filled with, like, these people Mm -hmm. of a certain race and religion. Mm -hmm. And they're all, like, in a trance. (laughs) And I literally told myself in my head, I was like, I'm going to die in this dream. I'm Mm -hmm. going to die. And... Nobody woke up from this trance. Like, uh-huh. my friend and I were just standing there. And then, all of a sudden, everybody turns and looks at us. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to die. And then my friend, my other friend from high school comes out of another door. And she's like, oh, hey, I know you. Like, come over here. It's okay. Everybody's okay. And she's like, when we were in high school, she was very religious. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why she popped up in my dream. Like, yeah. oh, my God. She was super religious, but she still liked being my friend. I wasn't as extreme as they were. And she pulled me in, and she was with this girl. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen this girl in movies and TV shows, more recently American Horror Story. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, crap, you're the key. And then I woke up. I always like when celebrities take the time to make an appearance in your dreams. It's like, oh, we've kicked this dream up a notch. We've called in professional actors. (laughs) (laughs) Right? She, you know what, what I like about her is she is actually a person with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So she's not a well-known actress, but she's been in all, a lot of the American horror stories, Mm -hmm. um, TV seasons. And so when I saw her, I was like, crap. You're the one. <laughs> like, I was like, shit. <laughs> like, I knew it. You know, my brain, first my brain was like, you're going to die. And then second, I was like, oh, she's the key. So. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means. I don't know. If, I don't know if the dream is going to continue. But my mom, I told my mom that story. And I told my brother. My brother's like, first of all, you sound like you're smoking crack. <laughs> and my mom was like, you're watching movies too late. Because I was mm-hmm. telling my family at breakfast, like, what happened? Mm-hmm. And they were just like, that's so weird. <laughs> but dreaming and sequences is very like high functioning yeah so i'm hoping it finishes it because i was like i, this I need is to weird, see the rest of the the story no i i, I like that cool 
I like that when it when it happens. And then it's like you can, I'll get up, I'll go to the bathroom, and I'll come back and I'm like, oh, I'm back in I'm back in the dream. There's another part to it. Yeah. Yeah, you know. part two. Mm -hmm. Like I that it was so weird to feel yourself being dragged. Mm -hmm. Like it was they were like, Okay, here, you're gonna feel like a pool. And I was like, What do you mean? And then all <laughs> of a sudden I'm getting pulled and I feel it like physically in my bed, like I'm being yeah. pulled out of my bed. And I'm like, God, this is creepy. <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think what that what do you think that means? Like what is that? What is uh, that oh no, I don't know. I think it's a great um plot for a movie. I guess. I mean I mean you've got something I don't there. Know. You've got interesting things happening. And uh I think I think it could totally you could make that into some kind of really interesting story. <laughs> Screenplay, weird yes. off the wall. Question. What is a Nautilus showing up in your... Because that was a very specific animal. Okay, like, well, I have Nautilus, not seen a Nautilus. Unless you were thinking of, like, working out, you know? Nautilus is, like, what? famous for gym equipment. Or... No, no. It was the animal. <laughs> the was, animal. Like, the actual... But the animal is I mean, the logo symbol for that for equipment. I mean, but anyway. Or you're what? thinking of the ocean. But Does it the mean Nautilus... the Nautilus shows up in your dream? Because it was the, so big. I was like, why is this here? The Nautilus is fascinating because that that shell is the Febronucci swirl, which yes, I'm, I'm totally addicted to everything about that mathematical equation and spiral. and It's amazing. I mean, but that is like, okay, let's just be real. It's kind of like a an animal you wouldn't really think of on the date. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah a lot of people are like dog bear tiger lion giraffe maybe zebra but a nautilus with its like little weird tentacles in the eye yeah i don't know we did talk a lot about oceany things um these past few weeks so you want to hear what it means yeah go ahead what does the internet nautilus say? shell is a symbol for the inner beauty of nature a symbol of life and internal harmony the chambers of the Nautilus shell are symbolic of the stages each individual passes through life. The spiral itself is a symbol of creation, movement, fluidity, and evolution. That's why I love that swirl. It's pretty intense because, I mean, I, I don't, but it literally was reaching out to me and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, I could go deeper and I could say things like, you know, you're shifting yeah. In your body, your life, you're shifting. You know, you have this big move coming up and you yeah. don't know what kind of transitions are going to happen in your entire life based on that one move. It's going to shift all kinds of things. And to be grabbed by something that's so known as being peaceful and wise and beautiful, I just think that that's going to be a good sign that you know, you're making the right decision, you're moving. I think, like, again, nature is, that's what moving out to this land is going to be like. It's you healing with nature. And apparently yeah. a whole lot of animals are coming to you. Oh, my God. I love animals so much, my, like, ser mm. honestly, I, I just, I love them. Like, mm. Churro today, I saw him. He was really far away. And I was like, Churro, my burrow. Like, I was just mm -hmm. singing to him and talking to him. He came running and he let me touch him. And Sky was next to me, following me around. And mm -hmm. she backed off. And I was just touching him. And he was just so happy. And I was like, oh my God, I love you. Mm -hmm. He's and I my think baby now. They can sense that. All animals can sense what we're feeling emotionally. They're yeah. very intuitive, very smart. I was really sad to see a lot of. Um, a lot of horses are kind of mal uh, malnourished because of the pandemic. Like people haven't been able to spend a lot of money on their animals and things. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. Just like, man, this sucks. It's yeah. really sad to see them. <sighs> anyway. All right. I'll stop being a Debbie Downer. Anyway, mm -hmm. moving on. Your turn now for stories. Oh, I have two new tomatoes growing. I'm so excited. I bought two these little... Tomatoes. What are they called? I just showed it to you. The little wind thing that spins. The pinwheels. Windmill. The little or tiny pinwheel. Yeah. pinwheel. Windmill. Pinwheel. I don't know what so, the 
I took those and I stuck them all around the tomatoes as like a, a to scare away birds and other things. Uh-huh. And then I actually wrap the tomatoes as they're growing in tin foil because I've wrapped them in netting. I've wrapped them in all kinds of things and the birds have just eaten through it. But right now, <laughs> and I was really worried about the foil because they like shiny things. So I thought yeah. it was just going to attract them more, but so far it's kept them away. So the foil oh, it like is scares working. them off a little bit. Yeah. Well, that plus the pinwheels, which have been turning because there is just so much wind. Wind? Mm-hmm. I need That's that wind awesome, to stop. Though. Actually, the wind is probably dying down. I think that was it the other day. Pinwheels are so cool. I'm so and excited that you have a pinwheel. I have five of them. And they're literally guarding. Five? What they're, the hell? Because they're teeny tiny. And I Did have you, them. Like, just get out of control. You're out of control. They're they're a dollar at Madukai. And it's like one thing that I buy for my garden. But then I stick the pinwheels in the garden and then they keep the birds away. That's hilarious. I just don't want to be like. I can't believe buying 20 you know i go to madukai maybe once every couple months you know we go on an adventure that's like one of our things when we get really bored we're like let's go to madukai and see what's new they have they bring in pottery i don't think we i don't think we ever went together did we no but they bring in pottery from japan and i'm just i love ceramics i love pottery i used to do ceramics be a ceramicist <laughs> years ago it's a very expensive hobby <laughs> um but i haven't had I the time know. to do it but i just i just love it and so every time i go in there it's like i stop at these there's like three large tables full of pottery that i just have to i have to touch all of it i have to look at pottery? it pottery mm-hmm. pottery huh that's interesting mm-hmm. i just i really appreciate Really beautiful pottery. Sure, my sure. Mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> um, and then I've been doing a lot of art stuff now. I'm really excited. I've been kind of decorating my whole um, second floor because I think my uh, daughter's friend might be staying in the big living room. The what? I'm sorry, in the living room. So I want to make sure it's nice room? for her. Yeah. So I bought the the rug and. I do have a couch. I'm going to keep it until she comes and goes. Okay. Very <clears> cool. I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited. That sounds like a lot of fun. I don't know what kind of things that they're going to be into. I know that she wants to probably do a lot of tourist things. It sounds like, oh, she's a planner. That's what I've heard. She's a planner. So I'm really proud of her. She's trying Planners to figure out good. what she wants to do. And um, every time, like, my daughter's not really interested in what she wants to do. She's just like, I'm just willing to go along for the adventure. <laughs> I'm like, like you sound like me. <laughs> just you Come plan. On. You were the planner. I would just go along for the adventure. I'd be like, sure, let's go. The ocean has been crazy. So not only has there been big waves, it's not. It's been choppy, and a lot of you know wind current and the undertows, of course, because it's kind of like stormy water. Yeah yesterday somebody there was a woman a hawaii woman she was only 21 years old she was hiking somewhere near pele's chair um on that mountain side and a wave came up knocked her off oh. into the ocean she did get swept out in the sea and she did pass she away. Died. Oh. yeah she and that's like a really tough channel anywhere around there the water is rough that's so out there sad Was she not hiking with anybody or was she trying to take some cute Instagrams or? Yeah, I don't know, but she was with friends because some people, they had recordings of her. They were able to call. That's terrible. They had jet skis launched from Sandy's. They had a helicopter out there and they couldn't find her. Not until after they found her body, like they found her body an hour later. So she drowned, huh? She did. Or she hit her head, whatever. Could. that's so sad people need to be more careful i mean yeah okay it's great to get like a picture but it's not worth your life and you should never ever yeah. take turn your back on the ocean never and no. you actually should not be climbing on the rocks anywhere people do that quite a lot though and as really we were pay attention and i we were driving around there that day yeah. i saw so many tourists climbing all over the rocks and the waves were big <laughs> And they just, so dumb, there dude. are signs, there are signs that say, 
don't go over there. Don't do this. Do you can do this. you can be swept off of the rocks and you can be taken out to sea. Like, hey, this is a bad idea. Yeah, but it was crawling with people and you see other people out there and they're climbing over the barriers. You know, there are lookout points that are safe. Take your pictures from the lookout point, not right. f- climbing over the rocks. It's a cliff. People slip and fall all the time. Oh, well, oh, no, I'm sorry so to hear sad. that happen. That's very sad. Yeah, so just um, please be careful. So please be careful. Everyone, Maya's just telling you, PSA, <laughs> obey the rules. Hawaii is not a forgiving place. They are islands. We are islands. We're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. A lot of ocean around us. And uh, the weather has been crazy. So actually just, if you can watch the weather patterns and you know, don't go out swimming (laughs) when the weather is this crazy, unless you are a really strong swimmer, but even then you should, you know, make sure that there's a lifeguard. Yeah, pick a beach that has a lifeguard. Pick a beach that has a bathroom. (laughs) I'm always saying that. Oh my God, you were in the bathroom, stop it. (laughs) Because I have seen too many things <laughs> when you're at a beach and people, there's like no bathroom and it's like, it's, people. yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not cool. It's not cool. It'll ruin your day. It'll ruin your day. I have some terrible well, stories like of how, how you, I have people who they, they jump into the ocean and you have to swim if you're pooping in the ocean the poop will come right up your back up into your hair ew what i've never heard that before in my life that was disgusting i I just had a whole visual in my mind you know that i'm a very visual person and i can imagine things that was really disgusting i know because one of the girls she jumped out and she's like oh she was she was dying you could tell and she's just like just go on without me don't look back (laughs) and she jumped up and then later i so (laughs) Um, I waited for her and it was all in her hair. You have to swim away. You have to swim away from the poop. (laughs) There are tricks. Like you found it in her hair? Like you didn't smell it first? Oh, yeah. She was telling me as a warning as she was approaching. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just stay in the water and wash your hair. Do something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, it was all over. Who is this? Who was this? Please tell me who this was. I'm not going to tell you who it was. Tell me. You're going to feel and terrible. And you know, she was wearing a shirt. It stained the back of her shirt. Dude, she had diarrhea, like explosive diarrhea. That's so terrible. You know, the fish are like all super excited about that shit. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On that note, we're going to end this. No, I'm taking all that out. That's no, terrible. I think that's really great. Okay, so everyone, <laughs> Maya is basically telling you if you got to poop in the ocean, make sure you swim far away from the shore, poop, but start swimming like sideways so you can get away you. from your poop because your poop will wash. <laughs> and thank you for feeding all the fish. You were the one who told me, wasn't it you? It was either you or my other friend, but she says when people, you see the guys and they're holding on to their surfboards, they're pooping. Pooping or peeing, but most likely pooping. They're most likely pooping. They're just holding on. Gross. All right. You know that's what they're doing. We're good. We're good. (laughs) This is good. Thanks for joining us for another episode of My Ties at Sunset. I know that we have a lot of extra little tidbits that come up here and there, but ultimately we had to end this conversation on poop. So be sure to subscribe. (laughs) Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and anywhere else you find your favorite podcasts. And until we meet again, ahoy ho.